Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Yesterday, I, with so many other people, got an email from OpenAI with one of the more anticipated things ever since back at their OpenAI Dev Day in November. The email read, Dear GPT Builder, we want to let you know that we will launch the GPT store next week. If you're interested in sharing your GPT in the store, you'll need to review our updated usage policy and GPT brand guidelines to ensure your GPT is compliant, verify your builder profile, publish your GPT as public. GPTs with anyone with a link selected will not be shown in the store. Thank you for investing time to build a GPT. Now, of course, GPTs are what OpenAI calls their customized versions of ChatGPT, which they released a builder for back again at Dev Day. Effectively, they are custom instructions that you can program for any sort of purpose that you want. They can be really simple. Just the instantiation of a particular use case, such as something where you've told ChatGPT that it's an excellent copywriter and you want it to always write in marketing copy in bullet form. Another capacity, though, of the GPT Builder is that you can have it reference specific information. You can give it PDFs, for example, that you want it to pull from. Sam Altman did that in his demo, sharing a blog post that he had written previously as a way to build an advice GPT for startup founders. You can also have GPTs trigger custom actions that happen outside of ChatGPT. And that's, of course, where some of the more advanced use cases come from. Now, so far, what I've seen GPTs useful for is for people to standardize workflows that they use over and over again. For example, some of the GPTs I've created are an AI content creator, which helps me come up with ideas for AI-related content, an AI tutorial muse, which helps me come up with different tutorials for the AI education beta that's going on right now, a job description copywriter, which is customized for my particular needs, for people that I'm bringing on the team to help with that AI education beta, and then more recently, a one-pager business planner that was designed as part of one of those tutorials for that beta audience. In other words, none of these are explicitly designed for other people to use, other than this one-pager business planner, which is part of a larger educational experience. Instead, they're just things that I needed for myself, and the time it took to create a custom GPT was a lot less than the time it would take to re-enter a set of prompt instructions every single time. And yet, if those sort of individual use cases are what I've seen predominantly so far, many people wonder if the presence of a store will open up a new set of opportunities. Certainly, there are no shortage of GPTs out there. Numerous sites like SEO.ai rank them based on various criteria. SEO.ai, for example, uses referring domains, which point back at those GPTs. They have Blog Wizard at the top, Grimoire, a coding GPT, up at number seven, and a lot of writing and design related GPTs that are in the top 25 or so. What Plugin.ai is another site for finding GPTs that also has not only a ranking, but a categorization system that includes categories like academic research, coding, text to speech, learning, investment and trading, and more. So what I thought I'd do today is give you five predictions for how I see the GPT store playing out. These are, of course, totally subjective and just my opinion, but if nothing else, they should give you some food for thought. Number one, discoverability will be more important than monetization. So what do I mean by that? First of all, what do I mean by discoverability? If you look at sites like this one, whatplugin.ai, it's very clear that one of the challenges of getting utility from GPTs is just finding one that might actually suit your purpose. Right now, people are relying on Googling to find third-party sites like whatplugin.ai to have to go try to search, hoping that the keyword that they're thinking about matches how the site has tagged a particular GPT, or otherwise clicking on a category and hoping to find something that fits within it. That is a super suboptimal experience, and suboptimal experiences like that lead to declines in usage. It creates a barrier to entry for people to find utility. So when it comes to the value proposition of having a GPT store, the thing that I'm most interested in in some ways is whatever system they put in place for people to actually find the GPTs that might be relevant for them. This will presumably be part of the GPT store experience. I can't just imagine it's going to be an endless scrolling list of GPTs with a particular price next to them, although I guess that's certainly possible. And so in some ways, this prediction is actually saying two different things. One, it's that right now I see the biggest problem not as monetization, because I think people are incentivized to create GPTs that are really useful for themselves already, but discoverability so that the efforts of the top part of the bell curve of people who actually want to create these GPTs, their work can actually provide value to the long tail because they can now find those GPTs. Now, the second part of this is perhaps a little bit of an inherent skepticism around how monetization will work. I think people are still just at the workflow experimentation phase, where unless there is some hyper-specific functionality that it feels very hard to imitate on one's own, I see it as fairly difficult for people to get out their wallets and actually buy these things. 
Now, right now, we don't have any idea about how OpenAI is going to suggest they be monetized, what prices they're going to suggest putting around them. And I think that that could have a major impact on things. But overall, my bet here is that initially, the GPT store will increase usage, but not because they create a monetary incentive around them, but simply because they create a better architecture for discovering the ones that are most relevant to any given user. Now, staying on the theme of monetization for a moment, though, my second prediction is that the tools that will be most easily monetized are coding and no-code development tools. These are going to be the more comparatively complex GPTs that involve external actions and which take processes which seem difficult or inaccessible now, such as building an application, and turn them into a natural language-mediated process. I think, in other words, that people are more likely to pay for a thing that allows them to do something that they weren't able to do at all before, as opposed to paying for a thing that just helps them do a thing that they can already do, but better. I think that the gap from zero to one versus one to two, in other words, is a very significant one. If you look back through this list, there are some notable GPTs that are coding assistants, Grimoire being maybe the best known. If I was trying to monetize, that is certainly where I would be looking. Number three, a couple of predictions around who are likely to be the earliest adopters and the first power users. One is a fairly safe guess, I think, in students, given that students are almost always early adopters when it comes to any type of new technology like this. But I can definitely see people finding study companions and topic-specific tutors or research assistants for a particular discipline a really useful and effective use case right away, and a small price being worth it to shortcut time when it comes to that type of use. Now, the second category that I think are going to be early adopters are digital marketers. The reason for that is fairly simple. Digital marketers spend a lot of time working in the realm of words. They write ad copy. They write social media copy. They plan social media posts and content calendars. All of these are things that LLMs can be really useful with. And again, having a shortcut of a GPT that's perhaps trained on best practices or has reference examples and so is going to be punched up when it comes to copy relative to just the custom instructions that you might give ChatGPT, I can see being a really valuable addition to the digital marketer's toolkit. And once again, I think validating this is the number of tools that relate to digital marketing in this SEO.ai top 100. We've got SEO, DeJargonizer, Blog Expert, Storyteller, Chat CEO, Viral Hooks Generator, Search Quality GPT, SEO Mentor, Article GPT, and more. Fourth prediction is that GPTs will be much more relevant for professional than personal use. What I see GPTs as is as the embodiment and consolidator of professional workflows. In other words, GPTs are really useful for tasks that a professional has to do over and over again, where they don't want to have to copy paste a similar set of instructions every single time, or even worse, reimagine them each and every time they have to perform that task. In many ways, your portfolio of GPTs becomes like a list of common workflows that you use day in and day out. And I think that that's going to be much more valuable in the individual professional's use case than it is for some of the more personal uses like recipe finders. That's not to say that we won't see lots of experiments with random things like recipes and games. I think that we will. But I think that the real utility is going to come from professionals who are using GPTs around particular workflows. Related to that is my fifth prediction, that GPTs will in fact help some roles or professions actually better understand how to use ChatGPT because all of a sudden things will be framed in the context of those workflows. Think about it this way. Imagine that you are a ChatGPT power user working in a digital marketing department and trying to help your boss understand why ChatGPT is useful. Instead of sending them ChatGPT, a blank open cursor screen, and telling them to play around with it and try writing some copy, you send them to the copy editor GPT and suggest that they copy-paste in some text and see how the GPT improves it. Basically, I think that not only will professionals be the major users of GPTs and the GPT store, but the fact of GPT and the GPT store's existence will make more professionals users of ChatGPT in general. Last prediction, sort of a bonus, and sort of a catch-all, frankly, Inevitably, even if our expectations of how much monetization there's going to be are way off, the simple presence of having a store will inevitably unlock more creativity. People are going to try to make money because they can, even if it doesn't work. And there's going to be some period before things are figured out where there will be a Wild West Cambrian explosion, choose your metaphor, of incredible creativity and really interesting and weird and off-kilter use cases some of which will probably stick in ways that we wouldn't have imagined. I, for one, am super excited to see how that plays out. But for now, that is going to do it for these five or six predictions for the GPT store coming next week. Appreciate you guys listening or watching as always. And until next time, peace.